morning, Doctor. Good morning, Mr. Ramos. How are you this morning? Oh, no, until I've had the first cup of coffee. Uh-huh. Coffee bad for a person, Doc? Only if you drink too much, Mr. Ramos. Hey. Morning. Did you have a nice run? Yeah. You were asleep when I left. You were asleep when I got home last night. Well, you know me in the late show. Sure do. Staying home today? Well, I thought I'd go in this morning and uh, bring some of those medical records up to date. I'll be back as soon as I can. Mac. It's Sunday. I know, but it's the only chance I get. Okay. Kids up? Watching cartoons. Ah. Uh, I'll start the coffee. I already did it. Thank you. I've got ten more laps to do. Don't let me stop you. Get back in town. They get back tomorrow afternoon sometime. Then we're still on for dinner? If you want. I want. Every night I can get with you. Every middle of the night I can get with you. Not to mention the early mornings. Are you listening to me? Huh? You want to know about dinner? I'm going to go home, shower, and I'll pick you up about 7.30. Well, you can shower at my place. No, I... I've got some calls I've got to make. Patient's name, Norman Stanbury. Age 55, seen last March for annual physical... STT wave changes indicated during stress EKG. Patient subsequently put on low-fat diet and entered into exercise program at Westside Y. suffering severe anxiety and attempting to treat the condition by working on Sunday afternoons in order to avoid confronting condition. Prognosis still in doubt. Treatment was a lot. Putting head in his hand. Hello? Doctor service. My name is Joe Hamill. I am trying to reach Dr. Richards, please. Doctor is on will call. We expect he'll be checking in within the hour. Would you like to leave your number, Mr. Hamlish? Hamill. Yes, sir. And what's your number, please? I'll have the doctor call you when he checks in. We'll call in about four. Would you like to leave your number? I am. 
was supposed to play tennis with. St. Clair. I'm sorry, Doctor. I didn't know you were in. Go ahead. Hello. Uh, uh, hello, Dr. St. Clair. You, you may not remember me. My name is Joe Hamill. We met about three months ago at the Kansas Society's fundraiser. We talked then about getting together, trying to play some tennis sometime. Uh, sure, I remember you, Mr. Hamill, but uh, I'm afraid there's no way I can break loose to play any tennis today. You see, I'm pretty busy here trying to straighten out some records. No, no, that, no, Doctor. That's not why I'm calling. Maybe it is, really. You see, I was playing tennis earlier today, and I... I guess I pulled a muscle or something. Uh, Mr. Hamill, I'm sure rest and applied heat would take care of that very nicely. Right now, I'm trying to do some very important things. I've pulled muscles before, you know. This is not like any of those other times. I'm nauseous, and... I've got a kind of pain that starts right below the breastbone and down my left arm, too. Mr. Hamill, uh, frankly, uh, you caught me in a lie. I don't remember you. Forgive me. Could you tell me how old a man you are? Uh huh. Now, this pain down your arm, is it steady or does it throb? Steady. Is there anyone there with you, Mr. Hamill? No, I'm by myself. Mm hmm. Where do you live? Monroe Street, near Talmadge. Not too far from uh, Webster Memorial, then, huh? About five blocks. Okay. Now, I want you to humor me a little bit, Mr. Helm. The chances are this pain you've got is nothing. But I think we better get you down to the emergency room at Webster Memorial. Check this thing out. The emergency room? No, oh, no, no, no. Don't get hyper on me, Mr. Hamill. I'm a cardiologist, and that's the first thing we want to check out. Standard procedure. Just let me take a listen to your pump, and chances are you'll be home in time for your first martini. I'm on my way. Hamill? Hamill! Ah. Check. This is stupid. Yes. Stupid rules. Hospital. Stupid hospital. Right. Hello, Joe. How are you feeling? Joe, huh? Fifteen minutes ago, you didn't remember my name. Well, I'm occasionally hypocritical. Answer my question. How do you feel? I think I want to throw up, but I can't. Much pain in your arms and your chest? A little bit. Maybe more than a little bit. All right, I want you to get up here. Take it easy. This lady's going to hook up a gizmo to you to see what's going on in there. If, in fact, anything is. You can take this chair back. Well, well, shouldn't I wait? What for? Well, if he's okay, I'm just going to have to wheel him back out. Now look, I know about all the sacrosanct rules of he this... He called him stupid and he said, Doctor, cardiac arrest. He's in the v -fib. Cold blue. Car coming in. I be started. Let me have 400. 400. Stand clear. Make a lighter cane and bike car. Okay. Stand clear. Cane drip. The 12 lead on him. Move it.
are you feeling, Mr. Hubble? Coronary care unit at Webster Memorial Hospital. It hurts. I shouldn't wonder. Why does it hurt? Did I have a heart attack? We don't know yet, Mr. Hamill. But you had a something, that's for sure. You passed out. Something like that. Everything seems to be under control now. We'll be uh, watching you, so uh, don't worry about a thing. You bet. We called her house. There was no answer. They're out of town. That's what your employer said. A Mr. Chancellor from the Times Dispatch. He said he'd take care of who to notify. Doctor, that's St. Clair. Oh, he left about an hour ago. He said to he'll see you in the morning, so what you should do now is just close your eyes and go to sleep. Close my eyes and go to sleep. That's right. Good morning, Stace. Good morning, Doctor. Oh, Mendel's called a staff meeting for 10 o'clock. Tell him I'll be there. We really need the information, and if I hang up, the way this switchboard's been working, we'll never get through to you people again. Morning, Doctor. Good morning. How's Hamill doing? Well, he got a little sleep. Restless most of the night, though. I can't say that I blame him. Any coffee? I'll bring you a cup. Die. Well, everybody dies, Mr. Hamill. If you're looking for life everlasting, you've come to the wrong fella. How do you feel? Putrid. Was discomfort? Enough. Well, hopefully that should dissipate pretty much by the end of the day. I didn't really have a heart attack today. I don't know yet. The test results aren't back. 38 is pretty young for a heart attack, isn't it? Any age is young to the person having the heart attack, Mr. Hamill, but like I said, we're not sure that's what you had. We still have a ton of tests to run. I said a bad one. They don't have any good ones, Mr. Hamill. Hey, call me Joe. B, stop playing word games with me. I'm a big boy. I want to know everything that you know. And I want to ask you a favor. A, okay, Joe. B, I don't know very much yet. And I'm not playing any word games with you. Now, an educated guess is that you might have had a heart attack, but we're not certain. Now, what is certain is that something did go wrong inside of there, and the quicker we find out what it is, the sooner we'll be able to deal with it, okay? Hmm? How much the favor? About visitors. One visitor at a time, ten minutes out of every hour, as long as you're here in the coronary care unit. How long would that be? That depends on what those tests show. I might need two shifts, Doc. You just lost me. Well, there is this lady that I am involved with. Uh -huh. And there's my wife. I'd like the lady to be able uh -huh. to come with her own set of visiting hours. So that uh, she doesn't run into your wife. Right. Yeah. Well, you let us know if the discomfort doesn't uh, subside. If necessary, I'll increase the pain medication. In the meantime, I'll set up the rest of those tests. You get some rest for now, yeah? Then you won't set up this visiting hours thing? Mr. Hamill. Joan, I don't think it's the doctor's function to assist their patients in carrying on their affairs. Is it a doctor's function to make moral judgments about people he doesn't know? All right, all right. All right. We'll see. When the time comes. Mr. Hamill, can I get something for you? Yeah, I, I saw you give St. Clair a cup of coffee. I'm afraid not. Tea? Nothing with caffeine. What can I have? There's hot chicken broth, I think. 
<laughs> so medical science has finally caught up with my mother. Fifteen million dollars. That's what the federal government has earmarked for this research. And the fact that we haven't gone after it is frankly an embarrassment. Dr. Mendel, aren't we putting the cart before the horse? The reason no one applied for the funds is because we really don't have facilities for that kind of research. Doctor, the reason we don't have the facilities because we don't have the funds necessary to build those facilities. Ergo, we apply for the funds, we get the funds, we build the facilities, we do the research. Simple? Isn't there such a thing as getting too big? No. Well, if we're agreed that the best medicine is practiced on a one-to-one -one basis... But we are not agreed. One-to-one -one medicine is an anachronism. Medical teams, working with the most sophisticated hardware we can devise, give us the best chance of effecting a cure. And that's our job, not holding someone's hand and murmuring beneficent bedside bromides. Can it wait, Dr. Sinclair? I wanted to say a few words about the Board of Governors fundraiser. No, Doctor, I'm sorry I can't. I've got to hold someone's hand and offer bedside bromides. I want to see him. Why can't I see him? Mrs. Hamill, you can see him tomorrow. But first, I think that we should talk. I want to make sure you understand his condition. Is he dying? No, I, I don't believe so. He's had a coronary event of some sort, but we don't know how bad it was yet. They said he's in critical condition. Oh, Mrs. Hamill, until he's finished with these tests, we have to follow certain procedures, and one of those procedures is initially listing anyone in CCU as being in critical condition. I don't understand this. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. I don't know how this happened. I mean, it's like some hideous nightmare. I know how concerned you must be. And I guess about all I can say at this point is that we're doing everything we possibly can to find out how extensive the damage is. And, and I'll tell him that you were here. I'm sure that will do him a world of good, truly. Are you sure I can't see him today? Please. No, I'm sure. Thank you, Doctor. He's got heart trouble. How am I doing? Just fine. Good evening. Good evening, Doctor. If you ask how I'm feeling, I'm going to go right for your throat. I'm not going to ask. You slept well enough. You ate reasonably well. You were able to cut back on your pain medication without you climbing the walls. So I'd say you're okay. Well, what's the paper say? A few changes. But your enzymes are okay. So once we get you stabilized, I think I'd probably like to do a stress EKG on you. Whatever you say. <laughs> Wish I could believe you meant that. Your wife was here today. I think your lady was, too. She about uh, five foot six, blonde, beige, turtleneck. Yeah. She was here. How'd you know it was her? It was her. When you get out of CCU, I'll set up that uh, dual visiting shift you were talking about. But you won't like doing it, will you? No, I won't. Why? You can't be Catholic. <laughs> Come on now, is that a new rule? We have to move to the rear of the Vatican now? <laughs> I just meant uh, it's not usual. 
Maybe you're not usual. Well, maybe I'm not. But let me answer your question this way. It's only a business. But I will say this much. You're trying to get out of a marriage, and I'm busting my hump trying to keep one together. You've had a cardiac arrest. The fact of the matter is that my father died at the age of 48 of a coronary. And if an insurance agent were to write us both up, your rates would probably be a lot lower than mine because of genetic factors. You and me have about the same life going on, but we're moving in different directions. I don't mind admitting I have some very mixed emotions about you, Hamill. St. Clair, we're totally up to you. Would you save me? Well, it's a dirty job. But somebody's got to do it. that he's a patient who got out of CCU as of yesterday. Now that he has access to a phone, a patient who's going to drive me right up the wall. That's what it means. I believe the old-fashioned phrase is, you got your goal. Yeah. Well, I must admit, it's a phrase I never wholly understood. Hamill is a near genius who thinks he's a genius, a layman who thinks he's a doctor. The pain in the rear who's going to outlive us all and shorten my life considerably. You are cute when you're mad. Yeah. And you're gorgeous when you're sarcastic. I wasn't being sarcastic. I meant it. Anything that can get you to get angry or to get you to smile or to do anything even on that list of approved things for cardiologists to do gets my vote. You saying I'm a little dull? Saying that you're very dedicated. Ah. Which? Fool and dull. It's been a long 15 years, hasn't it been? It was a very short 12 years. It's been a very long three years after that. May I ask you a rough question? Sure. Are you having an affair? two answers. The true one and the really true one. Which one do you want? I'm not sure. The true one is no. I'm not having an affair. What's the really true one? really true one is no I'm not having an affair anymore hit me Max slap me if you want to because doing nothing hurts me more than anything you could do with your hands student. I lived with an intern and I married a doctor. Every step up was a step away. 
the more you were around dying, the more you closed yourself off. And the more you did that, the harder you were to touch. People need to touch, Mac. Cartoons. Let's not pull the plug on us yet. Okay? With one condition. Anything. To let this hammer guy get you mad more often. How about a transplant, then? A transplant? Be serious. Doctor, I'm asking you a question, and it concerns my heart. I can assure you I'm very serious. Okay. Hold up your hand. Turn it around. Now look at your little finger. The area of your heart that seems to be affected is about the size of your little fingernail. Not exactly worth ripping the whole thing out for. They're having a lot of success with transplants at Stanford. Yeah, and the reason they have is because they weed out crackpots like yourself who don't need that drastic procedure. Then what? A bypass? Hamill, will you give it a break? We still haven't finished some tests, but we already know by what we have so far that you don't need a bypass. Why don't I? Because you don't have a major cardiac insufficiency. Says who? Says your coronary angiogram. As interpreted by? Me. And I'm your doctor. And I'm very good at what I do. I know. I checked you out. You did what? Look, it's my heart. I made a few calls. I'm a newspaper man, remember? You ought to feel good you checked out okay. I wasn't aware that I needed to be checked out. Doc, we're not the Corsican brothers. I have another cardiac arrest. You don't die. I do. Doctor, could I get you uh, some more milk or something? No, thank you, Mrs. Hamill. Well, Joe, I, uh, I guess I really should be going. I have to pick him up from a recital. Sure thing, I know. No problem. Are you sure you won't be lonesome without me tonight? I mean, I can get a sitter if you want. No, there's a game on the tuba. I'll be fine. Give the kids a kiss for me, okay? Yeah, I will. And I, um, uh, I'll see you tomorrow then. Right, tomorrow. Goodbye, Doctor. Goodbye. Nice lady. You better get back. How about walking part of the way with me? Something I want to talk to you about. Something out of all those magazine articles you've been quoting to me? In a way, yeah. There's this one article that gives a point total to the important things that happen to you. Get over a certain number of points and supposedly you're heading for trouble. I am already in enough physical trouble. I don't need any points added to my life. You follow me so far? It's tough, but I'm hanging in there. Okay, now, so if I decide to talk about a divorce with my uh -huh. wife... Hold it, hold it. Not another word. 
Look, you want to get a divorce, you get a divorce. You want to be with the other lady, you be with the other lady. But you leave me out of it. This is classic Lazarus syndrome, and you can just leave me out of it. What is a Lazarus syndrome? Patients who think that doctors are God-like miracle workers in all things. Now, I might be able to get your heart to start beating when it stops, but I can't make a decision for you. I can't, and I won't. Okay, fair enough. One more thing. One more short thing, Hamill. I have other patients, you know. About that Dr. Mendel guy runs this place. Yeah, what about him? The guy I share a room with. Mendel's his doctor. He came in to see him last night late. Come on, Hamill. What? I'm pretty certain that your esteemed head doctor is a junkie doctor. See you around. What are you talking about? Dr. Mendel has one of the finest reputations of any... We'll talk. Dr. St. Clair. Good evening, Dr. St. Clair. I'm sorry you were unable to attend the board's fundraising banquet this evening. A number of people inquired about your absence, but I told them a man with your schedule couldn't be expected to waste his time on such mundane matters. Dr. Mendel? That's correct. You're calling me at 10 o'clock just to bless me out about not being at some damn banquet, is that it? Not at all. I'm calling to thank you for your aid in helping me practice medicine. Uh, Dr. Mendel, I, I, don't, I don't know what you... And I'm also calling to suggest we set up a meeting, you and I, so that you can explain some of the subtleties of medicine I obviously don't understand. Uh, doctor, I still don't know what we're talking about, but if, if you want a meeting, we'll have a meeting. When and where? My office, in half an hour. <coughs> Mendel's unhappy. Live it. What about? I don't know. It was either something I said or something someone else said or... Uh-oh. It's undoubtedly my fault, actually. The institution should keep top-notch doctors at work. We should avoid underbooking your caseload so as to force you into spreading your wisdom among other patients, patients not your own. Doctor, I still don't know what you're talking about. We're talking about Albert Dominguez patient of mine who told me this afternoon he doesn't want the bypass. A patient of mine who told me he's now deciding he might want to be your patient. Why? I don't know. I never heard of the man. Never met him. That's your first lie, Sinclair. And I don't intend to let you get away with it. Doctor, I don't lie. You were introduced to Dominguez last Thursday. What room is he in? 516. Oh, he shares the room with a patient of mine named Joe Hamill. That's correct. Okay, so maybe I did meet him, but uh, the name went in one ear and out the other. As far as I'm concerned, he's a guy... So you did him. lie. I forgot his name. Oh, whatever. And I certainly didn't talk to him about his condition or your diagnosis of that condition. But you did talk to Mr. Hamill about a bypass in negative terms. Hamill does not need a bypass. Dominguez does. Then give it to him. I can't now. Why not? Because your Mr. Hamill is pointed out to Mr. Dominguez. They're both about the same age. They're both in after their first heart problem. They're both very much alike, so why should Mr. Dominguez run the risk of major coronary surgery while all you're recommending for Mr. Hamill is a rehab program of diet and physical reconditioning? Doctor, I regret that all this has happened, but you can't hold me responsible for having a motor mouth patient. I can. I do. I am. Here are Mr. Dominguez's records, Doctor. I want you to read them and study them closely. But, Doctor, that, that's not... And then I want you to tell Mr. Hamill to butt out talking with my people. Then I expect you to sit down and write me an apology. An apology? An apology for? for nearly costing Mr. Dominguez his life. Unless he consents to the bypass. Yes, Mr. Dominguez, for real. 
Well, if the nurse comes along, I tell her I'm heading for the john, you know? But you have a laboratory in your room, Mr. Dominguez. I tell the nurse that Hamill is using it. I got it, Mr. Dominguez. Mr. Dominguez. You said your answer was going to be for real. Well, I'm sort of giving my roommate some... Giving him some space, you know. Well, why should Mr. Hamill need space? Dr. Sinclair. Yes. Uh, we've never met. I'm Denise Racine. Hello. Hello. Uh, listen, I, I want to thank you for setting up this, uh, this visiting privilege for Joe and me. I, I appreciate it. You're welcome. Well... I guess I better be going. Yes. I think you better. Uh, Mr. Dominguez, why don't you read your newspaper a little while longer? You know what I hate about this place? You can never slam a door when it most needs slamming. Now, before you... The thing I hate about this place is patients who think they know more than the doctor who's treating them. Patients who think they can diagnose for other patients, too. Are you done? No, no, no. But we are, you and me. You can find yourself another guy, Hamill. I've had a belly full of your antics. Antics? What antics? Oh, we can start with your hit and run attack about Mendel being a junkie. Huh? Oh, it was no hit and run attack, yeah. Doctor. You never followed up. And then you think you proceed with your nocturnal visits with Betty Bimbo? Okay, you just hold it right there. I'm not finished yet, Hamill. Next, we're going to talk about the kind of ego it takes to presume to tell that poor man sitting out there in the hallway that Mendel's treatment is not warranted. Okay, let's start then. Now, I've got nothing to say to you. You gutless wonder, you owe me 30 seconds. I cannot be expected to be taken seriously bringing one of these let your buns hang out outfits. And I very much want you to take what I have to say seriously. Doctor, I have seen enough dope and enough people on dope to know what I'm talking about. Mendel throws down enough greenies to give a possum insomnia. I've seen him do it when he was in here talking with Dominguez. It's pretty dumb of him to do it in front of you, isn't it? A lot of doctors think people who are sick somehow get dumb because of it. Not true. Your Dr. Mendel is a speed freak. Check it out. Your 30 seconds are up. Okay. I did not tell Dominguez to scratch the bypass. I told him that he had a right to a second opinion. When he laid that on Mendel, the good doctor came unglued. He really blew his cork. A not uncommon overreaction for those hooked on uppers. Mendel's under a lot of pressure. No, he's not. Dominguez is the one under pressure. He's got a guy who wants to cut him open and put a scalpel to his heart. Now that's pressure, doctor. That is pressure. If you ever call my fiancé a bimbo again, I am going to knock you on your can so hard you will need a plumber to remove the floor tiles. Am I still your patient? Who else would have you? Good night, Mac. Good night, Joe. It's all right? It's all right. Uh, oh, what's this? X-rays of Mr. Dominguez and videotape of his angiogram. 
Dr. Mendel said you wanted to look him over. Says I wanted to look them over. Only if I don't choose to become a veterinarian. Technical terms, that's not what you'd call a zippity doo da heart. <laughs> Agreed. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Why did you want to consult on this? There's no hidden messages in what I looked at. That guy's in bad shape. Yeah, I know. Don't you think he should have the bypass? Well, after a look at this. Nothing else to think. Mac, what'd you need me for? Well, this one is sort of special. You know, I figured that you being a newspaper man, a writer, that you might want to give me a hand with this apology I'm going to have to deliver to Mendel. I figure you might want to write about something a little bit more interesting than the post-Tibetan cash flow. I mean, we're in this as a sort of a team effort. I figure you might want to pitch in. I'm dead. No, you're not. Hold this. You just don't know how to take your own pulse, that's all. Hey, that's not bad. How long you been at it? Oh, about 10 minutes, I think. Take a break. How come you're not yelling? Steam, you'd be all over me. But you're acting almost friendly about this thing. Almost. How come? Caffeine. How come so friendly, Doctor? I saw something, Joe. It means that I'm going over the records that Mendel gave me. And looking at the uh, the angiogram and the EKGs. I saw something that doesn't exactly fit. It's like looking at one of those what's wrong with this picture puzzles on the Sunday funnies, you know? It's something I've seen or read. It's not right. Damn if I know what it is. What are you going to do? Well, I'm going to tell Mendel uh, I apologize. I'm going to tell the Mingus he needs to have the triple. But there's always going to be something inside of me that's convinced I'm doing the wrong thing. Wrong for who? 
people and for Mendo, one for me, one for Dominguez. You better get back to work. I don't want an operation, though. If I can get better without an operation, then that's what I want to do. I'd vote with you, Mr. Dominguez, if the facts warranted that kind of therapy, but they don't. You have a severely advanced case of coronary artery disease. I've seen the tests that Dr. Mendel has run on you, and I, I agree with his conclusions. You think I should have this bypass thing? Well, I've seen the tests, Mr. Dominguez, and I... I can't ignore what I've seen. You got a minute? Sure. Come on in. I won't keep you long. I want to leave something with you. And I need a couple of papers. I've done about all I can with the visiting hours, Alan. No, I'm not talking about that. It won't be necessary anymore anyway. You spoke with your wife. I didn't say anything we both didn't know already. I just said it out loud. She's doing okay. I think. Well, how are you doing? Tough duty for both of you, huh? Yeah, for sure. Anyway. That's not why I'm here, and that's not what the papers are about. Go. The floor nurse said that I might be discharged Wednesday. Is that right? Yes, it is. You'll be with the outpatient rehab program. Can I stay another day? Assuming that you don't need my bed for somebody really sick. Why? I mean, what's the point? The point is that Dominguez is being operated on Thursday morning, and the little guy is scared to death. He could use a friend. And if I could stick around another day, I might be able to be of help. No. Why? Because he won't be going back to your room. He'll be going directly to the cardiac post-op unit, and he'll probably be there the better part of a week. But can I watch the operation? Moral support kind of thing. Ye gods, Hamill, no. The man's under anesthesia. Your moral support wouldn't be worth a zip. Nice thought, though. Well. Now, I don't want you to take this the wrong way, but I started out to be a reporter before they got me into this financial gig. And I've been asking questions and making notes since I got here. You're writing a book? No, that's not my thing. But one thing I noticed, and don't get mad, is that this place isn't run for the patients. It's run to make doctors' lives easier and the nurses' lives sheep easier. Sheep dip. That's sheep dip. Maybe, maybe not. But anyway, I made out a list of suggestions. Improvements. Use it in good health. For people who are in poor health. Hello. Thank you. No psychiatric attendant. None mend. None take them. Girlfriend come in to pick you up? Yeah, do any time. I'm gonna miss you, man. Hey, I'm gonna be in the outpatient program. I'll be here three, four times a week. Did you ever think of dying? Something happens to me 
I want you to make sure that they put the right name on the stone. Nothing's gonna happen. But if it does, you'll be here tomorrow to make sure they get it right. Okay. Well, I, I, I don't think St. Clair will let me. Please, man. It means something to me. Please. What about this one? Allowing conjugal visits between spouses when one's been in the hospital for over a week and their physical condition permitted. Already goes on all the time. You're kidding. Not officially, of course. But the nurses generally know what's happening. When a husband and wife ask not to be disturbed, they tend to look the other way. Mm. Well, why not make it official then? Because Mendel would have a stroke. And the board, all of whom are overworked, would have to be reminded what the purpose of a conjugal visit is. Given a choice between being a patient in your hospital and a prisoner in a Mexican jail, I think I know which one I choose. Which one? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dad. Yeah. There's some people out front to see you. The guy says his name is Hamill. Okay. Dominguez asked me to be there for Pete's sake. I could not say no to the poor guy. No, of course not. Not after all he's done for you. Standing sensory duty and whatnot. <laughs> I was striving for cardiovascular benefits. <laughs> <laughs> Could we please change the subject? <laughs> Denise, would you like to help me with the cake? Absolutely. <laughs> Here you go, Joe. <clears throat> Thanks. You're entitled to one cup. How many are you entitled to? All I want. Rank has its privileges. I can see that. <laughs> Have you figured out what isn't kosher about this thing with Dominguez? All I found out is that your distrust of doctors is catching, even to a doctor. But you said something didn't add up. Yeah, until I can specify what that something is, that's about all I've got is an unfounded charge that could ruin the career of a man that built that hospital into one of the finest cardiovascular units within a thousand miles. Not to mention all the doors he opened for me, the ones I couldn't do myself. Boy, you doctors sure stick together. Yes, we do. If I was a baseball player, you'd call it teamwork. If I was a reporter, you'd call it uh, professional courtesy. But since I'm a doctor, it's suspect, huh? Can I watch the operation? Is it possible? Yes, you can. There's an amphitheater, but I... I wouldn't advise it. How okay. come? Because I'm afraid that if you watch Dominguez being opened up, you'd have a heart attack. That's how come. Can you think of a better place? Proceed for this thing. Anything goes wrong, you nail the guy that goes with us. Nothing is going to go wrong. Be a piece of cake. I was in a car accident when I was a kid. They operated on me then. Take out some ribs here. I guess this is a little more complicated. Piece of cake, I'm telling you. There's a postcard on my nightstand next to my bed. It's got the address of my family on it. Something was screwing. You'll write and tell them. Nothing's gonna happen. If it does. Tell him that their son is dead. 
and put it in a way so they don't get too upset. That's going to take some kind of letter. Okay, people, let's go. Okay, hello, Mr. Dominguez. Okay, we're just going to scoot you over to this other table here. Okay, there you go. seen an operation before? No. There have been an operating room before? No. Okay. Now, assuming that you don't pass out at the first sight of blood, just ask me anything you want to know. Right, just give me a play-by-play. -play. I don't understand a thing that's going on down there. What are they doing down there now? Edwards, the anesthesiologist. He's probably telling him what to expect to feel when he starts administering the anesthetic. Once that's done, once we're a little closer to being ready, I'm going to give you something. I'm going to ask you to start counting backwards from 100. Chances are you'll probably get to about 91. Next thing you know, you wake up in a cardiac surgical unit. That clear? Yes. Second stringers. Who are as qualified as human beings can be. I'm not aware of the circumstances surrounding this operation, but that procedure is not out of line. What is? I don't know. I think something. You now put a mask over your face and you'll be frightened. You're going to get a blast of air now. It's going to help you relax. And here it comes. Okay. One more. Some kind of disinfectant? What? The stuff they're putting on him, is that some kind of disinfectant? He had ribs. What? The guy in the angiogram. And the x ray I looked at, he had all of his ribs. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
His record said that he was in a car accident and two of his upper ribs were surgically removed as a result. That's not him. It's not him. Look, will you fill me in? This is an angiogram. That's what had me convinced that a bypass was a necessary procedure. And Mendel gave me somebody else's angiogram. <laughs> Mendel, we're about 10 minutes away. Thank you, Dr. Keep me posted. Yes, sir. This is my job. You stay here. that he's under anesthesia, his life is being risked needlessly. And I'm terrified that maybe you're well aware of it. I beg your pardon. It's got his name on the label, but it's not his angiogram. Well, maybe some names got mixed up. Maybe. Hopefully that's what happened. But either way, he doesn't qualify for this kind of procedure. In your opinion? Doctor! Are you going to perform a triple on the basis of a wrong angiogram? Almost ready for you, doctor. He's in good shape. Thank you, doctor. That operation can't take place. I won't allow it. You won't allow it? St. Clair, will you grow up? His heart is strong enough to take it. But he doesn't need it. That's unnecessary surgery, which is unnecessary risk. Sinclair, you and I go back a lot of years. And there's an oath that goes back a whole lot farther. You try to stop this operation, you'll never practice medicine in this hospital again. And if you go ahead with it, you'll never practice medicine anywhere. So help me God. Medicine. Medicine, my angry young colleague. It's just a little bit more than aspirin, band-aids, and bedpans. Medicine, whether you like it or not, or whether I like it or not, is a business. Cash and carry, pay on delivery. X number of dollars buys you an operation. That operation buys you life. Additional days, months, years of sucking in air and blowing it out again. But there's a lot more than the human patient we have to concern ourselves with. You don't see it, do you, Sinclair? There's another patient. Medicine itself always needs attention. New equipment, new procedure, new research. And you have to go out there like some imbecile song and dance man. Go to dinners, celebrity fundraisers, foundations, government agencies. Hey, look what I got, folks. A nuclear medicine unit just opened up. A new vascular treatment wing. We do the best pulmonary function tests going. We do better bypasses in St. Mary's, more kidney transplants in Kennedy Memorial. Write us a check. Give us a buck. Please, give us a break. Please. Arms. Oh, doctor. I'm 
so tired. St. Clair. To cancel the surgery. Dr. Mendel is not feeling well. Well, okay, doctor. We'll close now. Uh, shall we reschedule? No, cancel. There'll be no surgery. I ever saw you. What's up? Digging for clams. Always best at low tide. Tide's really low this morning. Funny. Real wet. Hey. What? Aren't you supposed to rest for a minute? Oh, yeah. Right. <sighs> the reason why I'm here this morning is that I was at a meeting at the hospital late last night. Mendel resigned. Good. I'm sort of taking his place. How do you sort of take his place? Well, they offered me the whole thing, but I turned it down. I figure that's two jobs, really. It's what got Mendel into buying in the first place, always wearing two hats at the same time. I told him I'd like to find a guy knows about money, knows about the financial community. Who could share that half of the job? A guy with whom I could uh, share the responsibility of running that place. You got any candidates? Yep. What's the pay like? Uh, probably not as much as you'd make at the newspaper. Uh, how did I get into it? That just kind of uh, came into my head. Anyway, if it was you we were talking about, there's no question you'd make more money at your old job. The old job, of course, being one of the factors that put you in the hospital in the first place. In charge of expenditures, money, logistics? With one proviso. What? If you ever at any time countermand any order given by any doctor in that hospital, I'll feed you cholesterol cocktails until you croak. How about one proviso on my end? Go. Patient has a complaint. Complaint of any kind, he comes to me. Not to the doctor, not to the nurse, but to me, a guy who's been there. A guy who knows how scary three o'clock in the morning can be in that place. I can live with that. But can you live with me? Time's up, Hamill. <laughs> 